Last time on MasterChef Canada, the home cooks faced a mystery box that took exotic to the extreme. Here we go, buddy. Oh, that's gross. And the top nine targeted their biggest competition. Watch out, bitches, because I'm coming after you. I heard that. Someone's got to go home. The pressure was too much for some. Eric! Eric burning uh, again! I think Eric's in trouble. Uh, and in the end, it was Carly who bid a heartbreaking goodbye. Tonight, a tough team challenge is all about street smarts. You'll be running your very own food trucks. Let's do this. Come on, guys. Let's go right now. Let's make some right now. And the top eight struggle to feed a lunchtime crowd. That is unacceptable. You're going way too slow. Let's get it cut. Who will drive their team to victory? And who will face the most intimidating pressure test in MasterChef history? So are you saying there could be two people going home? It's early morning at Nathan Phillips Square, a vibrant public space in front of Toronto City Hall. The eight remaining home cooks are about to face their next team challenge. These team competitions are extremely tough. Right now, we're at the top eight. I definitely need to step it up. I mean, this is Masters of Canada. I just need to stay focused. We're walking through this sculpture of like a gajillion bikes, and it's just stunning. And then I see two food trucks. I've never been on a food truck. I've never thought about cooking in a food truck. This is seriously bad news for me. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning. Chef. Welcome to Nathan Phillips Square. Great public spaces like this one play host to North America's fastest growing culinary trend, the food truck. Today, you'll be running your very own trucks, provided by our friends at Kraft. <laughs> I'm so excited. I've always wanted to run a food truck. I love food trucks. I wouldn't ever want to personally like run one, but I love eating from them. You're going to create delicious Italian and Mexican dishes to sell to the hungry crowds in this public square. Tamara, you were the winner of the last elimination challenge. Today, you get a huge advantage. You get first pick. It's like really nice day. It's warm out. I think right away I need something fresh, something light. Italian food is a little bit heavier. I will pick the Mexicana food truck, please. Come and get your apron. Thank you, Chef. Eric, as a runner-up in the last elimination challenge, you are the captain of the red team. That leaves you with the Italian truck. I'm definitely a lot more comfortable working with Italian food. It's my second favorite cuisine besides Chinese, so I'm pretty happy with the choice. Please come up here and get your apron. I'm just going to try and pick two really strong team members. People I work well with are definitely Pino, Danielle, and Mike G. Tamara, you also get first choice in choosing your team. This person cooks with spice, and I need double the spice. I pick Marita. Being the first pick is flattering. It shows that she thinks that I'm someone who could help her team win. Eric, who are you going to choose? First person I'm going to pick is really a no-brainer. He's a wizard when it comes to Italian food. My first pick is Pino. Pino is going to be the key to winning this challenge. I pick Mike. I hate team challenges because I'm always in the bottom. Yeah. I choose Danielle. I don't want to be picked last again. I'm always picked last. So tomorrow, who's going to complete your team? So this is strategic. Eric and Kayla don't get along, so I definitely pick Julie. So Eric, how do you feel now that you have Kayla on your team? I feel perfectly great having Kayla on my team. I'm absolutely nervous having Kayla on my team, but I'll try to make it work. <laughs> Tamara. Yes, Chef. We're giving you one more advantage. Perfect. You have the option of trading a member of your team <laughs> for someone on the red team. Perfect. Think carefully. I am a poker player, so I have a lot of strategy. I really like to plan every move. So I would like to switch uh, Pino for Julie. Tamara decides to take Pino from my team. Yeah, it does suck a bit, but it surprised me that she gives me another Italian. It's a good move, trust me. I think we'll work fine together. I'm still confident. So now I'm on the Italiano team, and I'm happy because I do not like Mexican food. You now have two hours to prep and cook 
before you're open for business. You will both have access to a pantry with everything you could possibly need. Sorted proteins, spices, and a huge selection of Kraft shredded cheese. Today, it's not about what the three of us think. Today, it's all about the bottom line. Both your dishes will cost exactly the same price, five bucks. The team that sells the most meals and makes the most money will win this challenge. All the money earned by both teams today will be going to a Kraft-supported charity. Kraft Shredded Cheese is also generously adding $5,000 to the total amount earned. Wow. Are you ready? Yes, yes chef. chef. Your time starts now. OK, guys. Cool. Start, start talking, Tamara. Okay. For sure, we're going to do a taco, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Taco. So, this is a big challenge for me. This is the first time I'm team captain. This is where I want to shine. I'm thinking, I'm thinking a steak taco, and we can either braise it, grill okay. it, or whatever. We have to put on a plate that's worth $5 and make it delicious. I'm thinking on the side, a ceviche with uh, tortilla chips. Tamara decides to do a ceviche. We might be a little ambitious here. There's so many components. I think that's too much. Let's just do one taco. I don't, I don't think that's enough, you guys. The ceviche. I feel all that arguing and what to do, what to do, the less time we're going to have making it. We need to make a decision now. Okay. What do you guys think? I think that's good. Yeah, go. okay. While the blue team goes with a steak taco and ceviche, the red team will make stuffed meatballs on polenta with a marinara sauce. This is mobile food. It can't be fussy food. It has to be food that's not going to get all over you. The ideal is a handheld snack. So a nice meatball sandwich, a taco, would be something that I would do. My role is to do the grilled polenta. Julie's doing the sauce. Eric is helping with the meatballs. And Danielle is a swing. I'm really excited about our menu. But oh my god, Eric is all over the freaking place, jumping into the truck, jumping out of the truck. This is me as Eric. Ah! I need garlic in here, period, because we're braising anyways. Do you know how long it's going to take me to get all that garlic? Did Julie caramelize onions first? Yes, she is. As a team captain, Eric is afraid to delegate. I think this is a real problem. Guys, where's Eric? Eric! Huh? Michael's calling you. What you making, guys? Uh, so we are doing uh, stuffed meatballs with crispy fried polenta yes, chef. and marinara sauce. Stuffed meatballs? Yes, chef. Polenta? Blended. To me, that sounds like it's getting a little bit complicated. You've got to get as many of these out as possible. I would get rid of the polenta. It's just one other thing you got to worry about. Yeah, OK. I'm not very gung-ho about the idea because I love grilled polenta, but we have to listen to the chefs. When they give us advice, we listen. So glad we picked Mexican. It was a great choice. Tamara, yes, give me a couple of minutes. Tell me what you're working on. What's yes, on the chef. menu? We're going to do a flank steak taco with a red and a green sauce and some charred corn. Okay. We're also going to do a shrimp ceviche. You're going to do a ceviche? Yes, chef. Personally, I would say drop the shrimp. Stick to one, make it delicious. OK. All right, you can yes. do that? Yes, chef. Pino, you hear that? No shrimp. Chef Michael suggests to scrap the ceviche. Great idea. Now our menu is more focused, and right away we get to work. Salt, salt, salt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six minutes has gone by. There's a big crowd building up, and you'll be feeding them in 60 minutes. 60 minutes? Come on, guys. We've got to move a little bit faster here. My money is on the Italian right now. It's simple. People understand it. It seems like the, uh, the blue team is complicating things with all these different ingredients. they got to remember that two people are serving. Two of them will not be actively preparing food. Start to complicate any of the dishes, they're going to fail miserably. But even with their new pared down menu, the red team still has over 400 meatballs to make. May I make a suggestion? What, we got to use this cheese more. We got to put a little bit of the cheese in the meatball, please. Fine. OK, they will moisten it up, I promise you. With 45 minutes to go, Eric is starting to panic. OK, why don't you guys go in there? We'll roll. Are you kidding me? Go in there. What else we am I got, doing in there? We got this, hon. We it's, got it's this. It's two minutes. And what's the point? Eric is driving me crazy right now. We have 400 meatballs to cook, and I'm really worried about the time. Eric, I think you should be cooking them. Fine. Just throw it in two minutes. I'll be back. Let me just get stuff ready. Just stay in there. Julie, can you yes. help Eric? OK. And tell him to calm down. OK. Hey, Eric, I'm helping you. Uh, OK, fine. 30 minutes. You have 30 minutes left. You better have all your protein in the oven cooking. Butter, garlic, garlic butter to brush the bun with. Worry about cooking the meatballs no, first. Just, what do you mean? I'm cooking the meatballs and then I have to stand around to do it. 
But you gotta be kidding me. You've got, what, six orders here. You got raw meatballs there. You got raw meatballs behind here. You're not gonna make it unless you hustle. I know, Chef. The home cooks are knee deep in their most public team challenge yet. Eric, you see the crowd? Oh, massive. Running their own food trucks in Toronto's Nathan Phillips Square. But while a huge crowd gathers, the red team is still struggling under Eric's frenzied leadership. Eric, how long were these in for? I, I don't know. Uh, oh, this is burning. What the f dude? What happened? If us ladies don't take control and calm them down, we're screwed. I'm really worried that there's no organization in terms of how we're gonna get these subs out. The baskets are going from here to over there to here. You have to be organized. You're absolutely right, Danielle. Okay, then move all this to the left. Danielle's making crucial decisions, and I'm agreeing. Yes. Danielle's helping me stay calm. I don't want to be frantic in a team situation, because that'll just make the whole team frantic. Just before service, we all pull it together. Yeah, so we just take out like this, load it up with the meatballs. That's, That's right. For the two teams to turn it around, what they've got to do is, the red team in particular, got to get their meatballs in, braising right away, and they've got to get those buns cut, cheese put on them, getting them soaked up in the marinara sauce, ready to load the meatballs in. And the blue team, hot, they've got to start searing off hot, that hot. steak ASAP, ready to relax to slice. Otherwise, they're not going to make it. I would agree. But with only minutes to go before lunch and a long line forming, the blue team doesn't have enough steak cut to fill more than a couple of tacos. I managed to get a small batch of steaks rested and ready to slice. I don't want to face the, the treasure test, so that's why we're really working hard today. Hey, you know what you're doing? Chef. I'm uh, cutting up our meat for our taco chef. How many portions is there? There's about 10 portions. There's 200 people out there. You have one hour to serve it. Chef? You're going way too slow. Yes, chef. Hey, hey, see that? This is Frank's steak. It should be cut this way. No, chef. I'm cutting this way. Is that no good? See the grain? The chef. When you cut across the grain, it's this way. See? Across the grain. It's very embarrassing when the chef steps in and, you know, says, that's not how you do it. That's how it's to be cut. Thank you, chef. Come on. Get out here. Yes, chef. Look, you got one guy, you got cutting by himself. Thank Somebody you, should be helping him. Yes, chef. Okay, Mike, you're here, okay? Use your team efficiently. Yes, chef. Or else you're not gonna be able to get the food out on time, yes, okay? Chef. Yes, chef. We're gonna run out. These steaks could take us down. While well, the blue team struggles to get caught up on their meat prep, the red yeah. team has a sub finished and ready to sample. That's good, I like the basil on it. Eric, one yes, thing chef. you cannot afford to have is raw meatballs Absolutely, today. Absolutely, chef. I do not want to get one complaint. One minute, see this big crowd behind me. They're going to be attacking the food truck in one minute. Okay, let's start putting some together right now. Where are the taco shells? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Let's go right five, now. Let's make some right go, now. Three, go. two, okay. one. Time's up. I see a huge, gigantic line coming over to our truck, so now I'm even panicking more. Hi there. Sure. One taco, one behind. Let's go. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Morale in the red truck is really high. We're ready to get this going. Four. Okay, I need four. Cheese, cheese and basil. Join us. There you go. I'm shocked right now how well everyone's working together. Eric has actually started to calm down. He's doing a really good job. Keep the speed up, Eric. You're doing awesome. Extra, extra, Kayla and Eric working side by side, not fighting. Keep it going, five dollars can make the difference. I'm proud of Kayla because she put our differences aside. We worked great together, but like, honestly, I don't see us ever being best friends. Just loaded, it's officially a craft people. Awesome, Look at that. There you go. Two on order, two. What the hell? Our lineup's not moving because we're not getting food out there quick enough. Nine total, nine tacos now. We need yes, a station to be clear. It's just a mess in the food truck at this point. Promo. Fuck. Pandemonium. Mike is slow. Gently placing meat on the cheese, putting a nice dollop of sauce. It's cute for at home, but not a food truck. Tamara, I think you should be here. Mike okay. should be there. Yeah. Okay. Maria's like, Mike, just, just get in the friggin' window. And I was like, OK, good. That's where I want to be. I want to talk to the customers anyways. Everyone's just working their tails off. Where is the onion? It's amazing how the tables have turned now. The blue truck seems so organized, so prepared. All of a sudden, the red truck, boom, in front. The meatballs are coming flying out of the red truck, but the tacos, they're having difficulty getting out. The uh, blue team has too many components going on that one dish, and they're not serving as many people. Here we are. Sorry about the wait. The red team, it's simple, it's lean, it's fast. As the red team continues to churn out their subs, the judges head into the crowd to gauge which team's meal is winning over more customers. You ate from the red team? How was it? It was delicious. Delicious. You liked it? I loved it. Yeah. And who likes the blue? 
Mexicana truck. It's delicious. And how long did you wait for the taco? About 20 minutes. 25 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Meatball tastes delicious. They're just pumping it out. Everyone's been waiting forever to get the blue truck, so we just got our food right away. Every single $5 counts today. We need some more people. We have the idea to try and poach a couple of their customers. Hey, guys, I see you've been waiting a little while. You want to come over to our line? We're going quick. We first sent out Kayla, and she recruited quite a few customers. Good. Can we direct you over to this line? She got people from the crowd, got people from the blue team's line. Some mini meatballs, some beautiful fresh mozzarella, fresh basil, dig right in there. People are walking over from the blue line to our truck. Food is looking awesome. People are loving our subs. Like, we are winning this today, I guarantee you. Uh-oh, they just took two of our customers. Who did? They, they did? did. They have no lineup. They've got no one. If we lose customers to the red team, then we lose. And that would be honestly heartbreaking for me. We really appreciate everyone's wait here. We promise it'll be worth it. The red team is getting their food out faster. But then, Michael discovers a problem with one of their sandwiches. Row, did you say? Yeah. Let me take a look. That does look a little underdone, doesn't it? Let me get this replaced right away for you, OK? I'll be right back. Do not move. <laughs> Thank you. Eric? Yes, sir? We have a major problem here. We have a raw meatball. What? I told you earlier, we cannot afford to serve a raw meatball. Look. Yes, that sir. is raw. We're screwed. That is unacceptable. I could just see Eric's heart, like, drop. I'm absolutely devastated. This meatball could be the reason I get eliminated. OK, I need one replated right away so I can take it back to the lady. I don't want to keep her waiting. Yes, sir. They give her an extra meatball? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Keep an eye on those meatballs. We cannot allow them to go out raw. That freaks me out. We have to give that money back. And it could make or break us. It's bottom line today. How much money can we bring in? You guys, we need to get that line. It's all about money. We... I know, but we need to be a lot more careful. Cooking the meatballs, there's ground pork in it, so 100% I'm worried about raw centers, so I have to make sure the insides are cooked. These are all perfectly cooked. These are all cooked. While the red team loses time double-checking Eric's meatballs, the blue team takes the opportunity to steal back some customers. This is my big chance. The red team put on a plate that's raw, and I think that's great. This is our time to step ahead. We need someone to go work the crowd, you know, do some magic. So I quickly grab a dish, and I start working the crowd, showing people, other customers who, who bought food from the talent truck, look what we have. How are you doing over there? Have we tried the Mexican yet? Mexicana. We have a marinated flank steak in there. This is just what comes on the side. We have two different types of craft cheese. One's spicy, one's not. I'm Italian. They're going to have a piccolo base if it's in Napoli. But oggi sono andato to Mexico. I'm the Italian who's converted today. So I tell him, I'm Italian, but I've gone Mexican. Tell him Pino sent you, and they'll take good care of you. One minute, you have one minute left. Right, here we go. You do. Underlay, underlay. One more, one more, guys. We're rocking it, Eric. We're rocking it. Can you just ask them if they want spicy or not spicy cheese? We're using the Kraft habanero cheese okay. and the Tex-Mex. Sure. Here, we'll give you two subs and an extra meatball each. In the dying moments of the food truck challenge, Thank both teams box. are fighting to win over the final few customers. There's no way to Thank you very much, sir. They are hustling. Sam Homer! Service is over. Close the cash box now. Woo! Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Nice. Nice. And a service, and we know we did well. But I think, did we as a team do enough? My confidence was blown the minute I saw that raw meatball. I feel like I 100% let my team down, and we don't deserve to win. Now, it's time to find out who sold more, the red team with their meatball sub or the blue team with their steak taco. The team with the lowest sales will face the pressure test. Congratulations, blue and red teams. You cooked two incredible food truck dishes. We've counted up the money, and together your teams have raised $985. All the money will go to a craft-supported charity. In addition, Kraft Shredded Cheese will generously contribute an additional $5,000. We've asked Silver E, one of Toronto's most popular street performers, to help us reveal the winning team. Captains, please place your cash boxes in front of him. And the winning team, by only $15. Whoa. To lose by three items, 
That's like a kick in the face, and then the shin, and then like the ankle. Like, that's bad. The winning team is the blue team. <laughs> Makes me sick to my stomach that we are literally $15 short. $15. I was a leader, I let my team down, and I let a raw meatball out. Three tacos at the end. At the end, three tacos. The red team, you will now have to face the dreaded pressure test. At the end of which, one of you will leave the Master Chef Canada kitchen for good. I'm going into my fourth pressure test, my fourth. And you know what? My luck may run out. $15. $15, that's literally three subs. Yeah. Three. Yeah, it's so sickening to my stomach, right? It's my fourth pressure test. My third. One of us is going home. It's the morning after the food truck challenge and the home cooks return to the MasterChef Canada kitchen. While Tamara's blue team is safe from elimination, Eric's red team must face a pressure test that will send at least one of them home. Whoever goes home, I'm gonna feel guilty because it's my fault doing the pressure test. These pressure tests aren't easy. There is not a lot of room for errors. I'm extremely nervous. Yesterday, you operated your own food trucks at Toronto's iconic city hall. All of you did an absolutely outstanding job. You've made MasterChef Canada really proud. The blue team, led by Tamara, served up delicious Mexican food. Their tacos edged out the red team's meatball sub. Eric, how did you think you did as a leader? I think I let my team down. I mean, it was my fault. A uh, raw meatball came out. It's completely unforgivable. Kayla, this is your fourth pressure test. It's wearing on me. <laughs> They're tough. They're really tough. You were a very effective team, but today it's every man and woman for themselves in the toughest pressure test yet. This pressure test will result in at least one of you leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen. And today, all of you will face that possibility. That's right, no one is safe today. It's time to find out what you'll be making. It's a culinary classic, a dessert. I just hate desserts. But not just any dessert. It's one of the grandest, most impressive restaurant dessert of all time. It was created in the late 19th century at Delmonico's restaurant in New York City and named after the coldest state in the American Union. Do you have any ideas what it is? No idea. Yeah. I'm guessing it would be a baked Alaska. Probably one of the toughest desserts out there. I actually have no clue what a baked Alaska is. <gasps> That's right. Oh. Oh. Holy shit. Baked Alaska. A majestic classic that, when conquered, is truly the mark of a master chef. What? I have no idea what it is. The base is a moist, airy layer of sponge cake, brushed with the essence of a syrup or liqueur. The center of the dessert is a dome of rich ice cream. <sighs> Surrounding the sponge and ice cream is thick, pillowy meringue, browned to perfection. Why don't you come up and take a look? I literally think it's a joke, because I don't even think it's possible. The trick to baked Alaska is making sure that whilst it's baking in a fiercely hot oven, that the ice cream doesn't melt. The meringue acts as an insulation. The right amount of thickness of that meringue is essential. Sponge, ice cream, and meringue married into one luxurious presentation. Please head to your stations. There you will find identical set of ingredients. You have 80 minutes to prepare, bake, and present an individual sized baked Alaska. Your time starts now. I'm very nervous. Just be calm, Kayla. Be calm, OK? Eric looks frazzled. No, I have no clue who's going home. Could be any of us. Calmest level's all-time low. 
Hate desserts, never had one of these before. This is an incredibly technically detailed dessert. There are three major components, the sponge, the ice cream, and a meringue that you want to get all over that dessert to insulate it, and then in a fiery hot oven. You have to make sure that all three elements work perfectly together. So the first step is make the ice cream, right? Agreed? They have to be doing it now. I'm most worried about ice cream. I've never made ice cream. I sure as hell have never baked ice cream. So worried? Yeah, I'm shitting my pants. Kayla? Hi. So I see you're preparing some strawberries, so you're not sticking with a classic. Uh, no, I'm actually going to do a riff on a Neapolitan ice cream. So I've done a chocolate sponge cake, a vanilla ice cream, and I'm going to do a strawberry sauce. Well, I've never seen your hand tremble quite so much as it is today. So I'm going to leave you with that and Thank make sure you. that you uh, watch the time. You only have 45 minutes left. Danielle, how you doing? Good, how are you? What do you have in there? It's going to be a maple pistachio ice cream. Okay. And then I'm going to be brushing the sponge cake with a little bit of maple wow. whiskey sauce. You sure you're not taking a little bit of a risk there? I'm definitely taking a risk, but uh, it's Master Chef Canada Kitchen. It's time to start taking risks. Who's going home today? <sighs> it's definitely not going to be me. Really? Absolutely not. Your ice cream should be in there by now, so it'll freeze up solid. I've made sponge cake a few times, so I am feeling pretty good. OK, guys, that sponge cake needs to be in the oven. Go, go, go. Get it in there. I'm a little bit worried. Maybe this won't bake in time. I'm mixing the batter, and I start folding in flour. Julie? Hi. Baked Alaska challenge. Got to be the toughest yet. Are you confident that you can pull all that off? Yeah. Looks like the flour is a little undermixed there. I would take that out with a spoon so you don't get that uh, raw flour flavor. Thank you. I think Julie is having a meltdown. I just came off Julie's station. She was taking her Genovese sponge, pouring it into the sheet pan, and the flour that is in there that is unmixed, I said to her, take it out, remix it so it mixes through nicely. She didn't take that advice. She just takes her spatula and mixes it through, throws it into the oven. If we find uncooked flour in that sponge cake, it could be the end. Why wouldn't you take your advice at this stage of the game? 30 minutes. You only have 30 minutes left. Your last 30 minutes. I open the oven and I pull out the cake and it's not servable. I can see that there's too much moisture in the cake. It's raw. Is it? It's raw. I see Danielle and she threw her cake in the garbage. And I think, what are you doing? Uh, my sponge cake flopped. My egg, I don't know if I under whipped them or over whipped them, but starting over. If my second sponge cake doesn't work, it's over. I am praying for an absolute miracle. The home cooks are battling it out in the toughest pressure test yet. Oh, shit. Recreating one of the most difficult desserts ever invented, a baked Alaska. Danielle has ruined her first sponge cake and is now waiting to see if her second attempt works out. But she's not the only cook who's struggling. <gasps> they all look really scared. Not only that they have to make this hard dessert, but someone's going to be going home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm OK. I see Kayla go up and then go down. OK. I'm OK. You're safe. <laughs> oh my god, that girl will cook even if she has a broken arm. I start to mold my sponge cake, and it's mushy. It is brown globs of goo. Trying to salvage it and put it in a ring mold and cross my fingers. I pull out my second sponge cake. Oh, fuck me. And it's just as bad as first. I'm absolutely ticked. I have no time to make a third sponge cake. I have to use it. Danielle's having a problem with her cake, too. And I'm thinking, maybe hers will be worse than mine. 10 minutes. You only have 10 minutes left. Come on. Your meringue should be going by now. On the meringue, not the easiest of things to make. Separating those egg yolks from the white, making sure there's no contamination, because if you get a bit of that egg yolk into it, it is not going to become light and fluffy. Adding the right amount of sugar and then beating it so it is nice and stiff and easy to work with. That's the key. It has to be stiff so that it creates an insulation around that ice cream. It's time to put my meringue on my cake so I can start throwing it on. It looked like abstract art. I'm pretty good at culinary engineering. Uh, when it comes to constructing things, you pretty much have to slop a bunch of meringue on and just even it out, smooth it out, and take a spoon and start dolloping to get those nice peaks. You have five minutes. Start picking your Alaska. 
When I put it in the oven, I'm actually a little bit proud that I've actually pulled this off. My ice cream is solid. And my meringue is perfect. I put my baked Alaska in the oven. I feel like I have a little bit of hope. Everyone's doing awesome, but Kayla is behind everybody. A little bit worried about Kayla right now. She's got to get her baked Alaska in the oven. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Kayla's got the torch going. That's probably a smart idea. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough time, just fucking sear it. That's what I would do. Yeah, so my meringue isn't crisping up as much as I would like it to, so I'm just going to blow towards the top of it really quickly. Don't know what it will do to the meringue, but it looks pretty. Nice. Very smart, Kayla. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Heads up. Great job. Great job, guys. Great job. Great job. Time is up, and I'm definitely worried. My baked Alaska looked like an igloo, but a really ugly igloo. Please bring your baked Alaskas up to the front to be tasted. Compared to the beginning, I definitely thought I was going home. Taking out my baked Alaska, I think I have a pretty good chance of winning this. I know inside this meringue, my ice cream is soft. Right now, I'm not hoping to be the best. I'm hoping somebody screwed up more than I did. Now the judges will taste each baked Alaska and decide which cooks stay and which cooks will leave the Master Chef Canada kitchen once and for all. Eric. Hello, Chef. I tell ya, it cuts beautifully. Sponge, nice and fluffy. Meringue, nicely crisp. That cake, to me, is beautiful. You tell me you cannot make dessert, eh? That doesn't say it. You tend to underrate yourself. Sometimes, you have to Pat yourself on the back. Hey, Chef. Eric. Chef. Mm. It is very good. Thank you, Chef. Danielle. Chef, this is a maple pistachio baked Alaska. Ice cream was a little soft. Yeah. The sponge is a little disappointing. Yeah. Ice cream was soft. Yeah, it was. I'm guessing it's because of the insulation of the sponge below that made the ice cream melt on you. Thank you. Wow. Not your finest work. Definitely not. I want this bad. I do not want to go home on a stupid dessert. <sighs> this is intense, man. Hi, Julie. Hi. Do you think you honored a classic? I did. Some nice layers happening here. Sponge cake right in the bottom. It looks a little grainy. Mm. Did you incorporate all the flour? I tried to. Because it looks like there's raw flour in here. Wow. I've never seen a baked Alaska with raw flour. That might be very costly for you. Yes, I know that. Julie. Hi. Looks like the loading of the meringue got a little carried away there, huh? Yeah. Good success on the ice cream, though, by the looks of it. I had mentioned to you about the yes, you did. flour in the sponge. Listen, the texture of the meringue is good, the ice cream is good. Not listening to Chef Michael could send me home. It's Master Chef Canada's most grueling pressure test yet, and so far both Julie's and Danielle's baked Alaskas have fallen flat. Not your finest work. Definitely not. Now there's just one more tasting to go before the judges decide who keeps their aprons and who goes home for good.
Nice three layers. Thank you. What's the flavor of the sponge on the bottom? Uh, the flavor of the sponge is chocolate. Were you happy with the way the sponge turned out? Uh, it was a little bit fudgy, or more than spongy, but the flavor's really good. You're right. It's, it's fudgy. Yes, Chef. Almost like a brownie, if you wish. Thank you. I saw you using a bow torch. Where did you learn that trick from? I just wanted to get a little bit darker. I thought it would be a good idea. Well, it was a good idea. It definitely got it darker. It's different. Where is the sponge cake? Isn't that brown thing? Mm -hmm. Look at that. It doesn't look very peeling, does it? No, Chef. Flavor's nice. Took some risks here. And unfortunately, some of them don't pay off too well. Yes, yeah, Chef. A baked Alaska is not an easy dessert. At least one of you would be leaving the competition. We've got some tough decisions to make. This is a tough decision. This, you know, this one is very close. She had a problem with her ice cream, she had a problem with a sponge, and she even admitted she had a problem with a meringue. I think at the end, she pulled it off. I don't think it's a landslide on either side. So are you saying there could be two people going home? Potentially. Potentially. This was a very tough pressure test, and we had to make some very tough decisions. We admired the tenacity that you all displayed in the face of a very daunting dessert. But only one of you plated a baked Alaska that we'd be proud to serve. And that home cook was... Eric. Congratulations, Eric. Thank you, Chef. Please take off your apron and head up to the gallery. Thank you. I'm ecstatic. I mean, I'm relieved, but I just couldn't believe that I had the best baked Alaska. Eric is full of shit. I'm absolutely tired of Eric saying that he can't bake. The home cook that made the second best baked Alaska was plagued by an issue that continues to hold her back. Please step forward. Julie. You continue not to listen and question our expertise. Today, you are lucky. There were two home cooks who made even more mistakes than you did. You've got to change your ways. Please take off your apron and go upstairs. Thank you so much. Oh my god, I thought they were gonna cut her for a second. I think Julie is really lucky, and I think that was her last warning. Kayla and Danielle, your baked Alaska had many of the same problems. Neither of you made desserts that are worthy of this competition. But one dessert, despite all its errors, tasted good enough to save the person who made it. And that dessert belonged to... Kayla. Kayla, take off your apron and head upstairs, please. I am so excited for Kayla. She has proven herself. She has worked her butt off, and you know what? Her cake tasted better, and that's what it's all about. Danielle, you've had moments in this competition when you doubted yourself. But again and again, you came back with strength and determination. You're a lot stronger than you give yourself credit for. We're glad Canada has had the opportunity to see what an extraordinary cook you are. Your three kids back in Cranbrook must be very proud of you. Because their mother is a force to be reckoned with. Thank you. Come up here and let's say goodbye. <sighs> Thank you. As much as it is disappointing to go home, I'm going home to three most amazing kids in the world. Your cheesecake was the best of the bunch. I gave it everything I could, and I know my daughter's going to be proud of me.
I want people to know that if you want something, work for it. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do something and always give it your all. Danielle, who's going to be the first MasterChef Canada? It was a love-hate relationship, and I hope everyone keeps underestimating her. Honestly, Kayla's gonna kill it. Thank you, Danielle. On the next episode of MasterChef Canada... Come on up! ...the top seven confront the biggest mystery box yet. Oh, yes! My stomach's turning at this point. And an elimination challenge tests teamwork and skill... Switch! ...with shocking results. For God's sake, get the colander. That will send us home. Fuck off!